$299, you too can learn about how the gifts have ceased. That means they're no longer active. They're no longer working in the church. Cessationism is not a new doctrine. It's a false teaching that says the gifts of miracles, the gifts of tongues, the gifts of faith are no longer active. The first Corinthians 12, nine gifts listed are no longer active. Now that we have the scripture, we no longer need the gifts. It's objectively an unbiblical teaching that has no biblical standing. It's unfounded. There's nowhere in the Bible that says the gifts have ceased, that miracles aren't for today. They'll also say deliverance is not for today. And they also, most of them don't believe in modern day prophets and apostles. They have a conference coming up next year that you guys keep sending me. So I'm gonna react to it and look over the conference. We're also gonna look at the new trailer from the cessationist movie, which by the way, your boy had a small part in, um, featured in the film. So thank you guys for featuring me in the film. That's sarcasm, obviously. And then I wanna point you to a channel that is totally debunking cessationism. That's going to be going through the movie, debunking all of their claims using scripture. So stay tuned. This is going to be an interesting video. All right, we're going to start out by looking at the conference, Cessationist Conference. This is an entire conference based on teaching you that the gifts have ceased. They're no longer for today. Which the interesting thing about Cessationists is they're usually more for what they're against than what they're for. A lot of their channels is about calling us charlatans, false teachers, heretics, which we'll talk about later. But here's the conference in 2024, regional conference. Uh, on any given week, countless Christians gather and participate in strange practices. Ooh, spooky. They believe are true expressions of the power of God. So here's the strange practices they say we, we are involved in. Speaking in tongues, which by the way is 100% biblical all throughout the New Testament. Attempting to raise the dead, which is also biblical. Charismatic Christians believe they're participating in modern day miracles, but are these miracles real? Are the apostolic sign gifts in operation today? And the answer is yes, they are. All right, they're not gonna tell you that, but I'll tell you that because according to the scripture, they are for today. October 3rd, 2024, we lovingly, which lovingly, uh, that must be a joke because they don't do it lovingly. In the movie, apparently, I haven't watched the movie, but I've been told that they basically call us charlatan, heretics, false teachers the whole time. And I know this to be true because a lot of the guys on the flyer have channels and have videos and sermons where we just get called false. If you're charismatic, if you believe in the gifts, you're a heretic, you're false, you're going to hell. They've said this over and over and over again. Um, they carefully answer important questions by exposing the errors and building a positive case for the real work of the Holy Spirit today. The real gift, okay. Sadly, the debate over this issue has often produced more heat than light. And that's on you guys. We're not out here making videos every day about how every teacher is a false teacher but us. I have 1,500 videos and I don't call people false teachers. I don't expose people. I, I spend my ministry teaching the word of God, not trying to expose other people that are teaching the word of God. But you guys are the ones that have caused the heat. So here you say, more heat than light. But in the end, only one factor should determine the answer to the question. What does the Bible say? And this is so interesting to me. This is what I don't understand. How do you have an entire conference where you're going to teach about how the gifts have ceased when you don't have literally even one scripture? There is not one scripture in the entire Bible that says the gifts aren't for today or the gifts have ceased. So how are you going to tell God that the spiritual gifts aren't for today. So here's the speakers, our miracles gifts for today. I don't know why they have a fire emo a fire emoji. They don't even believe in the fire of God. Um, that's their own words. But here's the speakers, okay? John MacArthur, all these speakers, okay? I don't know these guys, but a bunch of speakers. Here's the interesting thing to me. They always say that we're prosperity. We prosperity gospel. We're all about money. $299. I don't understand this. I think the building seats 3,500 people. That's over a million dollars in just seats. So we're always, they always say we're about money. We ask for donations. We ask for money, prosperity, prosperity. $300 to have an event at your own church. Like where's the expenses here? Your own church for two days and you're going to charge $300. So if me and my wife want to go and we have four kids, but two of them are six to 17 and bring our kids $1,100 to bring my wife and two of my kids to go to this event. Like I, I'm saying this to everybody, not just the cessationist conference. Why are we charging $1,100 to go to a conference at our own church to hear the word of God, which you're not gonna hear the word of God because there's no scripture proving cessationism, but to go hear how charismatics are false. $1,100, I don't understand this. It makes no sense to me. We have an event coming up in November, 20,000 seats at our event, 20,000 seat auditorium, and the event is free 99. Most of our events are free. Yet here we are, charismatics, we're the ones about money, and you're charging $1,100 for my wife and two kids to go hear about how the gifts aren't for today. Like, I just don't understand that. Why are we out here charging this? I'm talking to charismatics, Pentecostals, all of you. Why are we charging $300? I would never be a part of an event that charges $300 to come 
hear the word of God. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so I want to look at the trailer for the new cessationist movie that's just coming out. And, of course, this will probably be getting played at their event. And it got played at their G3 National Conference, um, the premiere. So let's watch this and let's talk about it. And I'm not going to do an exhaustive teaching on cessationism. I already have that. I'll link it down below. I did an hour and a half teaching disproving cessationism. And then I'm going to link you to some guys that are doing a good jo job disproving it. But let's watch this trailer here. Be a true apostle. Jesus said, I'm sending you out to represent me. And I'm going to give you the power to work miracles. And a lot of times they'll say only true apostles did signs and wonders and miracles, which is not true. Stephen in Acts 6, 8 did miracles. Philip in Acts 8 did miracles. And Ananias in Acts 9 did miracles. And they were not apostles. So it's not true to say only true apostles had miracle power um, or the fact that they say the gifts and prophecy was only for the apostles or only the apostolic age or only for, you know, special leaders. When we know in Acts 2-4, the 120 believers in the upper room spoke in tongues. We know Acts 10, Cornelius and his household received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Agabus in Acts 11 and Acts 21 prophesied. We know those prophets in Acts 13. We know the Ephesian disciples got filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts 19. They weren't apostles and they spoke in tongues. We know Galatians 3-5, the Galatian church was seeing miracles. The Corinthian church was seeing miracles, signs and wonders, and the gifts. 1 Thessalonians 5.20, the believers in Thessalonica were encouraged to not despise prophecy. 1 Timothy 1.18 and 1 Timothy 4.14, prophecy was made to Timothy by the laying on of hands of the elders. So it wasn't just certain believers or certain Christians or special apostles that are receiving miracles and gifts, which they always say, that was normal average believers experiencing the gifts and the miracles. Those gifts were given for a very specific purpose. And so those gifts have now ceased. Says who though? Says who? He makes a statement. Those gifts were given for a very specific purpose, but those gifts have now ceased. Says who? You can't just make that claim. What you're going to find in this documentary trailer is there's no scripture. I'm going to give you some, but there's no scripture because again, I asked Dr. Michael Brown, what's the best scripture to defend cessationism or to prove cessationism? And he said, there is none. There is no scripture that says cessationism is biblical because it's not the gifts have not ceased miracles deliverance speaking in tongues is all happening it's all real and this is a complete false teaching and a lie all right let's keep going here i've been in these meetings five ten thousand people all speaking in tongues at the same time the charismatic movement is constantly searching after the next experience straw man this this is a straw man trailer here we're always seeking after the next experience, says who? The Bible tells us, let me show you this, to pursue spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Nico, put these on screen, because again, I'm going to give you guys scripture since this trailer won't. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 2. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Some translations say, pursue spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So the scripture tells us, to pursue spiritual gifts, which are, you do experience them, spiritual gifts are to be experienced, and desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Yet you're telling us that we just chase these miracles and signs and wonders. I have scripture to tell me to pursue spiritual gifts. You don't. 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Nico put it on screen. So my brothers earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues. So that's what the Bible says. This is what you guys say. But that's what the Bible says. I don't know. Who should I believe? 1 Corinthians 14, 5. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. Another scripture. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. So the Bible's telling me to pursue and to pray in the Spirit and to seek these things. These signs shall follow, Mark 16, those that believe. Yet you're telling me not to. So I, I'm just It kind here. of becomes like a... An addiction? This is not optional. If you are not earnestly desiring spiritual gifts, especially prophecy, you are sinning. So Sam Storms, who I highly recommend, says, if you're not desiring spiritual gifts, you're sinning. What he's saying is the Bible tells us to, and if you're not doing something the Bible tells us to do, then you are in sin. You're missing the mark. You're breaking God's command. The Bible commands us to pursue spiritual gifts. If you're not doing that, you're missing the mark. And that's what he's saying here. But of course, they're like, no. So what they've done with the gift of prophecy, if they simply redefined it. COVID-19, you'll never be back. In Which this guy's not a charismatic. Biblical times, if you get up and you speak in it's God's name, and that's not God's word, you were stoned to death. 
So in biblical times, if you spoke in God's name, but it wasn't God's word, it didn't come to pass, you're stoned to death. I don't have time to break all these arguments down. I'm going to react to a little bit later of friends that do. We've already done videos on this, but that's Old Testament, brother. That's Old Testament. We're in the New Covenant. We're not in the Old Testament. There's a million things I can say about the Old Testament that you had to do that is no longer relevant. New Testament prophecy is different clearly in Scripture than Old Testament prophecy. And in the New Testament, you're not stoned if you miss a word. It's not what the New Testament teaches. I really want to apologize, sincerely apologize for missing the Guys, I believe this trailer, I, I don't think it's it's unauthentic. It doesn't paint charismatic in the right light. It's taking clips out of context. I'll see about oh, Donald Trump. The guy said it was wrong. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. If you believe these manifestations should be commonplace in the lives of they should every be. Christian, then you're going to want to believe that it's real. Why were they commonplace in the life of every Christian in the New Testament? Why was the supernatural normal life of every Christian in the New Testament, but now it shouldn't be? Did God look down and say, all right, shut it down. No more miracles, no more deliverance. What a, what a false teaching. This no is. one has the gift of healing today. No one has the gift of prophecy to foretell the future. No one is hearing a word from God. I mean, you're definitely not going to if you live like that. If you don't believe God is speaking, if you don't believe in prophecy, if you don't believe in tongues, then that's how you're going to live your People life. People are self-deceived. That's a bold statement. Every experience I have, I you're right, everything man. that I might have labeled Awkward as the judgment Holy day. Spirit in the past, I've got to test it all by the Word of God. So, yeah, just a whole bunch of stuff here that's completely false, goes against the Word of God. We know Romans 8 talks about praying in the Spirit, and groans that can't be uttered. 1 Corinthians 14 says that the gifts are edifying of the church. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says you're the body of Christ and members individually. God appointed apostles, prophets, teachers, miracle workers, gifts of healing, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Um, the, it's all throughout the scripture. The miracles, the gifts are for today. This is absolutely without a doubt a false teaching that you should not follow. Now I have some friends that did a response to the movie that we just watched the trailer to, and I highly recommend you go and watching their video, hour and a half. I'll link this down below. They're doing a whole series debunking all these claims, but let's just watch the first few minutes here. It's going to be a series, not just because uh, they've, you know, made a lot of arguments about cessationism, uh, but frankly, they've just teed up arguments for us to knock down because they're just not that good. Uh, and I don't mean that as a jab. I don't mean And the arguments for cessationism are not good. They're not good because they're not scriptural. There's, they hold no water at all. Not to be mean. I just think that this is all built on traditions. I think this is kind of built on yep. speculations and deductions and not on the text of scripture. Um, call me a biblicist, but I, I think the Bible tells us that the gifts are going to continue until Christ appears in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. And these are some of my friends at Remnant Radio. I've been on their channel a few times, so definitely check out their stuff. I'll link it down below. But I think they did a really good response. Hour and a half, man, such a good response, knocking down every argument that these cessationists make in this new documentary. In and 1 Corinthians 1, 7. So I'm kind of a biblicist. I kind of just think Paul was right. He knew what he was talking about. He was inspired by the Holy Spirit when he wrote scripture. Uh, so that's just kind of my take. And as they have brought a bunch of arguments, we're going to try to do our best to knock them down. Uh, Michael, Michael, I know you guys are both as passionate as I am about this. Miller, I think you're probably most grieved of us all. Um, how do you guys, who wants, to, who wants to take over and kind of give an intro to what we should be expecting in this program? I'll, I'll let I mean, Andrew, you give the intro. I mean, I'll whatever. I don't know that Miller's more grieved over it. I, I've definitely grieved over it. But, um, you know, I, I definitely, Josh, when you talk about knocking down, to be really clear here, we're talking about knocking down arguments. The same thing they're trying to do with us. And, uh, and so we do want to knock down those arguments because we believe cessationism is unbiblical. We believe. Amen, brother. Yes, that's, the, that's it. That's the basis. It's unbiblical. Cessationism elevates the traditions of men over the Bible itself. We Amen. believe that cessationism, rather than uh, holding the Bible in high esteem, denies the authority of the Bible by using workarounds to say that the Bible doesn't really mean what it means. When the Preach. Bible just says stuff, we should do what it says. And I know that's very simplistic, and we can unpack that. Uh, we believe that cessationism is dangerous. We want to knock down arguments that are dangerous to your soul Amen. if you follow them. And this is just the intro, guys, to their hour and a half video. I watch the whole thing. I just want to hear Michael Miller's response to the movie, and then you guys can go watch the full with thing. With that said, I just want to highlight it here. We affirm with all of our hearts 
that cessationists are not just our cessationist friends. They're our cessationist brothers and sisters. Amen. Uh, and that is something they won't say. We call, I, I don't think these guys are unsaved. I don't think they're, I wouldn't call them charlatans, heretics. I think they're teaching a false teaching, but I wouldn't even call them false teachers. Yet for uh, for them, they call us heretics. Some of the speakers this week, Isaiah's a heretic. Isaiah's, they'll call you every name in the book. They can. But we affirm them as brothers and sisters in Christ. I would never say they're not saved for teaching this. Uh, Michael and I began as cessationists and um, and spent years in that camp and uh, experienced the Spirit of God mightily in regenerating us and sanctifying us uh, and uh, in, in many different ways and empowering us for ministry even before we believed in uh, the so-called uh, sign gifts, so-called, because the Bible never calls them that. We'll talk more about that. But uh, cessationists uh, can love God and be incredibly, uh, just have done incredible things for the kingdom, including uh, many of the people in this film. So uh, we hold no animosity. All right, I want to hear Miller's them. response, and then I will uh, we do want give you my to closing thoughts. destroy their arguments, because we believe that those arguments are harmful to your soul. Uh, Miller, do you have anything to add to what I said? Uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, we want to, uh, Michael, you said this already, and I'm going to just repeat this. We want to appeal to, um, Les, the maker of the film and other people that were in it as brothers. Uh, I think what has grieved me about the film, uh, is how, how quickly the accusations of false teacher, false prophet yeah. and charlatan get thrown out by people in that video. And I actually think that is divisive. Um, they don't mention cardinal doctrines that, that any of us who are continuationists have denied. Um, what they mostly do is, is talk about prophecies that aren't fulfilled and therefore people are false prophets. It's and the so typical throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just because there's an abuse doesn't mean you throw out the gifts if there's abuse of the gifts. Just like anything in society that has abuse, you don't throw out the whole thing. Again, I, I think I, my hope is that we can have a civil conversation eventually with some of these people. I think the hardest part for me in a lot of this is we've tried to have, have conversations They're not gonna talk with to you guys like they have Justin no, Peters. No, no leg to stand uh, we've on. tried to, to di dialogue on some level, and we've had a few that, that are willing to show up on the scene like Coasty Hinn and Tom Schreiner. But the others that they won't come on the show, and, and part of that reason is uh, is they actually think that we're dangerous, and I I think unfortunately we're going to say the same. Uh, we actually think cessationism is dangerous, and we have a number of reasons for why that's the case. Amen. But we'll, but that will probably be at the conclusion of whatever this series uh, comes to. But again, I, I I'm going to appeal as best as I can. Uh, though you may not think I'm a brother, I certainly think you are. And Amen. I want you to hear some of the reasons we have regarding these gifts uh, continuing today and some of the counter arguments we have for why you think they've ceased. So they go into a whole hour and a half teaching. I highly recommend watching that on Remnant Radio's channel. I'll link it down below. They watch the movie. I, I haven't had the two hours to watch the movie or the $25 to buy the movie to spend just to sit around watching two hours of talking about how the gifts aren't for today and how we're all heretics and charlatans. But they've they've watched it. They're doing a great review of it. It's going to be a series they're making. I highly suggest if you're confused about this, you go watch their hour and a half teaching and watch the rest of them. I wanted to respond to the conference, to the trailer, to the Remnant Radio guys. They're doing a great job exposing this false teaching, showing how bad it is. We're not attacking character. We're not attacking people specifically. We're not calling them heretics. We're not heresy hunting like they do. We're just saying this is a false teaching. 100% has no water no ground to stand. It's completely unbiblical. Cessationism is not biblical. So I hope these videos help you. Thankfully, the cessationist movement is actually dying, not growing. Statistically, it's dying, not growing. And I think that's because nobody wants to hear about what God isn't doing anymore. People want to hear about what God is doing, which is why the charismatic movement is the fastest growing movement in the world. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you check out Remnant Radio, and we'll see you guys in the next video. God bless.